welcome back to my channel guys today's video and its purpose is i wanted to introduce you to my childhood best friend we've known each other for 14 years her name is lola and basically the moral of it will be her and i were like polar opposite we are 100 percent the complete opposite characteristics everything despite all that we tend to find common grounds and we have our friendship work in such a beautiful way yes we need to tell them how we met <laughs> <laughs> yes so we both grew up in windsor mm -hmm. same building mm -hmm. i think i lived on the 10th floor from what i remember and she was on the 8th yeah and we went to the same grade school queen victoria shout out Every day we had a different group we were in, mm -hmm. but somehow me, you, and our other friend stayed closer than most. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I don't want to toot our own horn, but like people were kind of jealous. Yeah. Because they wanted to be our yeah. friend. We would hang out with everyone. We didn't judge yeah. anybody and we were all different. Ethnicity, yeah. religion, everything. Backgrounds, everything, yeah. And it was just from the beginning of being, what, 11, 12 years old? Yeah. We knew that, hey, we're different, like skin color wise, mm -hmm. what we eat, religion wise, mm -hmm. and culturally as well. But our main values, like about honesty, respect, responsibility, perseverance, like even studying skills, they were really equal. Mm -hmm. So my dad really liked me hanging out with her because I think he could see that you were a great person. Mm -hmm. And my dad hated everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wasn't allowed to have real friends outside of school. And we would sneak out together. Can I say that? Yeah. <laughs> we would sneak out together and be like, oh, let's just like go outside and go for walks. Yeah, we had like our own little clique, but at the same time, we would still get along with everybody and anybody. Yeah. Actually, like, it's not like- for a bit too. Yeah, oh, I did Yeah, too. yeah I know oh you did, God. yeah. There is one I don't mind sharing with you guys, like, because I had a unibrow back then. <laughs> it was me. Just kidding. No, not you. That's no, for you. But no, and then now they say um, you have the most perfect eyebrows. Yeah. Please Are tell they us real? what to do. You know. Yeah, just everything. I was always teased for my freckles and having a little bit of a weird accent growing up, which I kind of still do, but people now think it's hot. Mm. And then when I was younger, it was like, why do you sound like that? Mm -hmm. I that. So I think I was teased mainly for that. And yeah. I would get every single stupid English word wrong. Mm -hmm. Like they would tease me to say certain words. Yeah. Because it sounded funnier or different. Yeah. And here we are again with difference. <laughs> like our differences <laughs> brought us together. So absolutely. We just learned how to get along so well. Again, because we were all different ethnicities. We would learn from each other. We would like go and watch movies at each other's place, try our different foods, right? Like she would make me like a Caesar I made salad. Me like mushrooms. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I used to hate mushrooms. And Wrong. I love them. You know, it's just the fact of being open to something. Or at so, least you don't have to try anything, mm -hmm. but you can listen to the other person's point of view and their perspective. And you yeah. will never understand because you'll never be in their shoes, but you can just stand with them. You can mm -hmm. just agree with, not agree with them, because of course we're always gonna you have know, disagreements, disagreements or yeah. debate. Yeah. But essentially you need to listen. And I think that's the most important part of the friendship. Mm -hmm. We have grown to be under very strict rules at home. I don't mind sharing this with people, but my dad's side, my dad, I shouldn't say my side, he was very traditional in his own way. Mm -hmm. And it really bothered me because I was not like that. And I still grew out of that bubble. Yeah. And having her as my friend, culturally different, with different backgrounds, different skin colors, like our hair was different, our eyes, everything, mm -hmm. um, the way we communicated, our languages, and we still to this day think, Holy, like I'm so happy that I never grew up that traditional in a negative way because you can still mm -hmm. be traditional and take the positives out of it and yeah. be better, which yeah. you are doing because you're very traditional in a way, you're very family oriented. I'm not, I'm very alone with my dog, and you're very mom, brothers, like cousins, family. Friends, family. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so that's again another form of how different we are. Yeah, it's just. Um, she likes spicy. <laughs> I don't. I don't. There's a huge list 
of differences. And this is the whole point. We still get along extremely well. We grew through so much and we've kept in touch where we understand each other even more, like where we come from and the certain changes that we've made throughout our life, the reason why as well. We bounce off each other pretty well mm -hmm. because of our differences. Like yeah. you always ask me why and I always try and find answers for you unless I tell her to Google it because yeah. I don't know. <laughs> There's a few things that she's taught me. Like we're the same age. Age is just a number obviously. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so because of her building that independence and responsibility and accountability at such a young age, I learned so much from her and I looked up to her to an extent because she's completely self-taught. She's book smart, life smart, street smart. Like she, that's what I love about her and that's why when it's friendship like this, I value it and cherish it so much that I do anything to keep it healthy. That's somebody I would never want to lose, ever. So, I think the common ground between us is we're the strong female lead, mm -hmm. like in anything we do. And I think it's women recognize other women in terms of their own qualities. So if I'm an independent girl, woman, mm -hmm. then I see qualities in you and that's probably why we stuck around no matter what kind of struggles we had mm -hmm. together, right? Mm -hmm. well, some people choose to be ignorant too. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing about me and you. Mm -hmm. We always want to be educated. Yeah. Even though we grew up in a sense in a way where our parents didn't have sources of information that parents have nowadays. Mm -hmm. So everything they read on the news, like you've mentioned before, they believe it instead of doing yeah. research or finding the source of information from that. Mm -hmm. So we grew up in a very, this is how it is, household. Mm -hmm. And for us to break out of that and eventually educate ourselves, learn from people of wherever they're from. It doesn't even matter if they're from here or if their parents are from another country. It's the way that they were raised as well. We're always mm -hmm. curious mm -hmm. because we did grow up in a bubble. I think I did. Do you? I think so too. Yeah, I think we grew up in a specific bubble with certain restrictions. We grew up with strict parents, so only kids with strict parents will understand what we went through, mm -hmm. right? Like the time when we finished school is 3.40. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't home before four, all hell broke loose. Mm -hmm. And I think you had somewhat of a, where were you? It's like, I'm just chatting with friends. Yeah. Why are you making friends? <laughs> because of this, that's why we're making friends. <laughs> yeah, and so She crazy. makes me get out of the house and I hate it. <laughs> That's why I'm so good places. Uh, unless it's hikes that are five hours. <laughs> she got me on a boat and then she's the one that got sick. You'll see the video. I Not always sick. get motion sickness. But she's like, yeah, let's do it. It's a great idea. She would be the kind of girl to be like, Lola, let's go skydiving. And I'm a yes person. I'm always like, yeah, I'm done do whatever. <laughs> so we would be mid mid sky and she'd be like, that's it, turn around. <laughs> Bring that would be her. <laughs> For me. Like, it's like an extremely open prior experience and she already envisions what the hell is going to go yeah, down always. within the experience so automatically she has her answer and it's very logical but for me because I'm so adventurous I'm very spontaneous I just want to go and get that thing done I'm so open to anything because I'm all about learning new experiences like roller but coasters then, midway <laughs> she's like this was not a good idea we go bungee jumping and I would be like friend but, hey always in the back of my mind i'm like no this has to get done because for me i'm not a quitter so Mom when i start raise something, a quitter <laughs> when i start something i make sure that it gets done regardless of the torture and the scare <laughs> <laughs> you're crazy so our lifestyles in general is like complete opposite yeah we should probably give them somewhat of a list okay so family oriented for you I'm a loner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's true. Religion, atheist. Yeah. Atheist and religion. <laughs> How is this thing real, right? Yeah. It's more personal things for sure. Like, just choices. Yeah. <laughs> I think deep down, what we're trying to say is that no matter what different choices we make to raise our own lifestyle, in the end, our common grounds is be honest, be open-minded, listen, mm -hmm. 
be determined in certain things, like push each other and also be there for each other when one of them is down. Mm -hmm. I'm somebody that when I have problems in my life, I don't really like to communicate them. I like to hold bottle them in. Mm -hmm. As much as I'm very impulsive, and you are too, mm -hmm. with our decisions and like, hey, you hurt me, hey, you made me angry, hey, you made me happy. Mm -hmm. In the end, when something really hurts me, I bottle it in and I don't want people, I don't want to overstress people. But you're the type that likes to like. No, we should I, communicate I want that. that. I accept it. So because I care so much about that person I value, whatever they're going through, basically I'm going through as well. I want to go through it. That's how you end up learning from each other. It's because I'm actually feeling your pain or your happiness or whatever emotion that you're going through. I'm feeling yeah. it as well. And that's how I can relate even more to you. It's because I felt it. Because you're not Yeah. Yeah, and then we grow. Another thing is that when things go wrong, as she's mentioned, we're both very impulsive at times, so we can like snap at each other. We are both mature and wise enough to correct that mistake. Yeah, correct that mistake within the same moment. Yeah. We don't wait a day, we don't wait two or three days or a week or a month. For me personally, I hate going to sleep having an argument left with anybody that I care about. Why go to bed having that negative energy, negative thoughts, negative emotions, like it's so draining and it's pointless when you can just come to a conclusion and a solution with that person and done deal. Move on to the next day, make sure it's a fresh new start and you're happy, you're good. Sometimes we just crave the pain we think we deserve. We're always so familiar with people hurting us consistently that when people don't hurt us, we question it. Mm -hmm. And what we truly deserve is love and respect because we're human beings. Mm -hmm. But instead we accept challenges and we create problems because we want to solve those problems and we want to put each other in these hardcore situations, yeah. and painful situations. It's an unhealthy cycle, that's for sure, but it's the whole process of learning and growing. It's basically true. what it is. That we both have set boundaries and we are both very well understanding of exactly what they are and we make sure that we don't surpass that. We make it very clear, you have your life, you have your own choices and you could do whatever it is that you want and I could do whatever it is that I want and we're completely okay with that. So that's another huge thing is that we understand we're open to however lifestyle it is that we personally live and we respect it. We never force anything upon each other. Another very common factor that connects our friendship is our love of travel. I've traveled since I was very young. Like my very first time that I've ever been on a plane by myself was when I was 11 years old. Oh my God, same. <laughs> I didn't even know that. When I moved to Canada, travel, it really has a lot to do with being open to cultural differences in the language, traditions, food, mm -hmm. um, lifestyle, fashion, mm -hmm. movies, music, anything to do with art, even their science. Like certain countries are so much more advanced than others mm -hmm. when it comes to technology, right? Like you've been in certain countries that I haven't been to yet. Mm -hmm. Same, um, vice versa. Vice versa, yeah. I guess another thing is like, not only the travel part, because everybody travels, everybody goes to a new country and tries to experience it. I think we try and live like they do in that country. I've never really stayed in a resort my whole life. I've never stayed in a resort either. Yeah. Usually, even if it's a hotel, it's usually within the locals because both of us, during our travels, we love to absorb everything. Yeah. When I was a university student, hostels because it was cheaper. Mm -hmm. But then as I grew, I liked my solitude a bit more. So Airbnbs with like locals there. Like I went to Jamaica and there was a couple there and they had their own house that they've had for years and years and years and that was pouring into their economy. So I think it's important that mm -hmm. not only you travel to learn, but you kind of, I don't mind giving away my money when I'm traveling to other countries because yeah. I work really, really hard, don't get me wrong. But these people work 10 times harder than I do, mm -hmm. for less. And get paid less, yeah. And so I'm empathic in that sense, and yeah. I think you are Same. too. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the environment, I think we both care about it. Like, yeah. there's certain things that you've taught me. And there's certain things that she's taught me. Like, yeah. when I first came to visit Vancouver, to be extremely eco-friendly, to save the ocean, to yeah. save plastic, how to deal with it. Reduce, reuse, recycle? 
The yeah. psycho group. You know what I mean. <laughs> we love animals. Yeah. So I never grew up vegan by any means. And mm -hmm. as much as I really love animals, I don't really like to buy products that are used on animals. Yeah. So I'm very cautious with that. I do eat meat because most of my life I was raised that way. I mean, I come from a Mediterranean family. If you didn't eat meat, you were literally a nobody in the family. Like, you wouldn't eat. So, of course, she's taught me that there is halal meat, which is amazing. I, like, you bless the meat and you kill it in a very holy manner. Holy mm -hmm. manner, you know, which is, it's a gift. It's a mm -hmm. gift from God. And as much as I'm agnostic or atheist, she's taught me that there is a God. I do believe in that. I think that's kind of our common ground. I don't have a religion. That's what I'm going to say. I do mm -hmm. believe in religions. I don't have one. Mm -hmm. And so she's telling me that it is okay to not have a religion, but still have faith. Yeah. And I taught her to reduce the use of plastic. <laughs> Both very, 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 very useful. useful. But yeah, it's just... Little things like that, you know, we bounce off each other. Like yeah. there's certain things where she she says certain comments, and I remember being that innocent as well at one point and saying, "Hey, babe, I don't think that's politically correct to say." And she, instead of getting like, defensive, she's like, "Oh, I learned something new." Yeah, I never really take anything personally either. For me, one thing that I've learned in like a true real friendship is when you give each other a lot of excuse my language, but shit. And <laughs> clean it up. <laughs> but when friends give you shit, it's because you're meant to clean it up. That's the mm -hmm. whole point. Like if mm -hmm. a friend is giving you grief about something, it's because they know you can do better. Yes. And you should understand that they're only giving you shit because they care about you. Or else they would not put in any kind of energy or effort to tell you about something or any type of advice. Another factor is that you know, I'm a personal trainer, she's a dancer, so we both very much care about our health. We make sure we live a very active lifestyle. We eat as healthy as we can, we take care of our body inside and out. So that's something that really brings us together as well in terms of understanding and our values. To bring it to an end, friendships. <laughs> yeah. Hold on to a friend that you value and care about and whenever there is issues going on, make sure that you confront them right away because there's no point of holding a grudge or negative emotions within yourself. So solve that problem right away. But if you it's also easier said than done because people work in different ways. We've mentioned ignorance. There's some people, they are just not open to that. They've never really dealt with the difficulty and relationships in general, so they don't really know how to respond or react to certain situations, certain scenarios. And that's why they tend to choose the method of escaping as opposed to confronting. And that's when you just know that that person is not the right one for you. If somebody doesn't see your side of argument and Unfortunately, you don't see them in your future. It's completely normal and not toxic to cut that person out of your life because they no longer bring you what you need. Respect, mm -hmm. honesty. So if those things are not given to you in a friendship, why are you bothering? It's always going to be one-sided. So that's why we're trying to say, listen to each other, communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. If something bothers you, tell, tell them. Mm -hmm. And if at that moment that person doesn't care about your feelings, then you should not care about them either. Basically how we've had our friendship work for like the past 14 years, we could be not talking and not seeing each other for years, but then once we do reach out or plan something, it's like there hasn't been a single day that's missed. So we kind of like pick up where we left off pretty much. Thank you for joining us. I was so glad and so honored to be on my best friend's channel.